These Florida springs may soon fall eerily silent. The manatees that call this place home are in danger of disappearing forever. Yet despite mounting risk to their survival, not everyone in Florida agrees that the manatee is endangered. What's driving this environmental drama? And how can we protect these peaceful sea cows? We came here to find out. Let's go. Welcome to Crystal River, Florida, a small town that proudly calls itself the manatee capital of the world. We're gonna see manatees. I hope so. I think. I've never gone canoeing, so this will be an experience. Especially because you're kayaking and not canoeing. You're looking good, buddy. Now this is the place to see manatees in their natural habitat, thanks to the unique ecology of the region that draws them in during the winter months. Now our journey to see manatees starts in Kings Bay, a sanctuary connected to the Gulf of Mexico and fed by warm springs that remain a constant 72 degrees. These springs provide a tropical haven for manatees seeking refuge from the chilly ocean water. Now historically, the bay's abundant seagrass made it the perfect spot for manatees to stay warm, and well fed, but this vital underwater buffet is rapidly disappearing, leaving the manatee without a reliable source for the roughly 100 pounds of greens they need to eat each and every day. To understand what's happening, we paddled out to one of the springs, hoping to encounter some manatees and see the challenges they face firsthand. And we weren't alone. Every year, more than 300,000 visitors flock here, contributing almost $30 million to the local economy. Despite these hordes of tourists squealing with delight at manatee sightings, that was me and mom. Oh my gosh. Hi. Well, hello, mister. Hi. How are you? Thanks for coming and saying hi. Not everyone in Crystal River is a fan of the manatees. Or at least not a fan of the regulations like no boat zones and speed restrictions that help protect our gentle giants. And manatee protection status just changed again. Yeah, their federal status under the Endangered Species Act has shifted over the past few decades, highlighting the complicated, dynamic nature of wildlife protection laws and what changes to protection status can mean for the welfare of a species. Here's a quick manatee history lesson. Now, manatees were one of the original species listed as endangered in 1967, even before the Endangered Species Act was even passed. Back then, we didn't know how many manatees were left. They weren't necessarily listed because their numbers had plummeted, but because the threat they faced were overwhelming and all human made. Manatees have no natural predators. These gentle, slow-moving creatures are too big and way too mellow to be targeted by anything other than us. Boat collisions, habitat destruction, pollution, and climate change, these are all their greatest threats. We saw this impact up close. One man teed the gliding wing of a kayak bore scars from a propeller strike, a haunting reminder of their vulnerability. Poor little manatee. It was big. It was big. I don't know why I'm saying it little. It was huge. It was really big. <laughs> Probably the biggest one there. Yeah. In the murky water, their dark, rounded forms are nearly invisible, making them easy targets for fast-moving boats. Now, thanks to the Endangered Species Act, which is really effective in helping species avoid extinction, the manatee population grew from about 1,200 in 1991 to more than 6,000 in 2015. The success, however, sparked controversy. Boating industries and waterfront developments restricted by manatee protection rules wanted regulations that protected the manatees to be relaxed. So the early 2000s saw ongoing legal battles around manatee protection status, and all this was pretty messy until finally in 2017, during an era focused on downlisting protected species, the manatee was reclassified from endangered to threatened. This decision wasn't based on reduced threats. Those remained the same. Instead, it hinged on computer models predicting the population of manatees would double in 50 years. But these models ignored critical factors like climate change and pollution. So scientists criticized the decision, the public opposition was overwhelming, but the downlisting proceeded. Promises that protection would remain intact were not fully kept, with some devastating consequences. In 2021 and 2022, more than 2,000 manatees died. That's nearly 20% of the Atlantic population. The primary cause was starvation. You see, seagrass, that's their main food source. It has been and is still in sharp decline due to all sorts of factors like algae blooms and pollution and climate change and hurricanes and rising sea levels. And this period experienced a complete ecological collapse of this important food source in key areas. The crisis was so severe that biologists began feeding manatees to keep them alive. 
literally the thing you're not supposed to do, feed the wildlife because it got so bad. You might make manatee friends with salad. <laughs> But don't feed the manatees unless you are a trained professional they under the direction like of state dressing. or federal protection agents. This tragic turn of events underscores how fragile conservation efforts can be. Restoring and protecting seagrass is vital, but it's really difficult. On our travels, we saw areas where restoration efforts were abandoned after hurricanes churned the waters and destroyed everything. Again. The challenges are immense, but there is hope for these sweet mammals. In 2022, a coalition of advocates petitioned the U.S. government to restore full protections for the West Indian manatee, citing ongoing threats from pollution and habitat destruction. And the government recently offered its response, recognizing two subspecies. First, the Antillean manatee, which is found more commonly in the waters around Puerto Rico. This would be protected as endangered, which is a huge win. But the Florida manatee would remain at the lower protection threshold of threatened. Well, this is a step forward for sure. Our dear little manatees, okay, our dear big manatees still face significant risks. At least the Antillean manatee. I know, I know. Well, there's only like 250 of them left, so we better protect them, right? Or so many manatees in like. I get so angry when it comes to my manatees. We should all channel our inner manatee. Join us in this manatee meditation. Seriously, they're like all chill and they're vegetarians and they're happy go lucky. We should all be so lucky to be manatees. We could all be fat and chubby. <laughs> too and stinky <laughs> farts oh yeah kai smelled a fart and it was stinky <laughs> would you say like cabbage yeah an onion yeah <laughs> it's a blessing a manatee blessing <laughs> that's what i say about you every day <laughs> Where do things stand for these lovely sea pillows now? In 2024, 565 manatees died, which is a number consistent with prior years, but still kind of troubling. With factors like seagrass declines and habitat loss and boat strikes accounting for 30% of deaths, the challenges are far from over. Yet the love for this Florida icon remains strong. From manatee mailboxes to murals, look around you and you'll see these creatures are a beloved symbol of the state. Seriously, I don't think there's another creature with nearly as many endearing nicknames as this one. You have to tell us if you have a favorite down in the comments below, because we'd love to hear it. So surely we can all rally together to protect these gentle giants. Florida Springs don't have to go silent and future generations can come here wonder at the manatee just like we did. And also, let's not forget the powerful ways that creatures can sometimes surprise us with the way they adapt, even in the worst of circumstances. Like these whales who have suddenly started behaving so strangely in Greenland, you really need to check it out for yourself. 